On this episode of the Massive Agent Podcast, we're talking about podcasting and why you need to start a podcast. We're going to hear a story of how one agent in California, since March, he launched his podcast in March, he's given out 63 referrals to other agents and closed like six or seven of them already. Podcasting is super powerful, and you're going to learn exactly how to do it and why now. The Massive Agent Podcast. We lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You're weak. I've had better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 99 of the Massive Agent Podcast. We are one episode away from the 100, from the triple digits, and next week's show is kind of fun. I'll explain that in a second because you get to participate. I need your help. I need you to get involved, and it's actually a chance for you to get some of your uh, some of your specific questions answered. So uh, before we get into it, my name is Dustin Brome, your host. This is the Massive Agent Podcast, and if you're new to the show, welcome. I am I'm a realtor. I'm a, I've been an agent for about nine years in Salt Lake City, Utah with EA. XP Realty. I am a co-founder of the Industry Syndicate Real Estate Media Network, and this podcast is a proud founding member of the Industry Syndicate Media Network. And I'm also the co-founder, co-founder, the founder uh, and president of the Massive Agent Society. It is our one agent per market lead gen program, and you can find out if your market's still available and if you can get involved over at massiveagentsociety.com. Okay, so next week is episode 100. Episode 100 comes out on November 21st. I'm super excited about this. So I need your help. This is a 100% Q&A episode. I want your questions. I want your comments. I want uh, whatever you want me to talk about, whatever questions you want me to answer for you. If you are trying to figure out a strategy or how to hit the mic, well, if you're trying to figure out how to implement a certain strategy, or you're trying to figure out what direction to go to, but to go into business wise, then let's ask. Okay? Shoot me a message on Instagram at Massive Agent with your question, with your comment, with your concern, and let's let's talk about it. This episode 100 is for you. It belongs to you. So if you want airtime, if you want me to answer your question or talk about a topic that you want to hear about then you need to shoot me a message and we'll do it. So I will answer as many of them as I possibly can without doing a four hour long Joe Rogan episode, but I will just shoot me your message. And uh, as long as it's not a duplicate, I will get to it at massive agent on Instagram. Shoot me the DM. We'll get you on episode 100 and then look for that to drop on uh, the morning of November 21st, Thursday, November 21st. So this week we have David Sedoni on the show. He is the how to buy a home guy. He's the hashtag how to buy a home guy. He launched a podcast called how to buy a home back in March of 2019. Okay. That's like nine months ago, give or take. I'm a realtor and I don't feel like doing the math on it. So yeah, it's, it's about nine months ago. Okay. So he told me as uh, as we're getting ready for the the interview, he's he's clo- he's closed six or seven referrals that he's given out. Okay, so his podcast is direct to consumer and it appeals to everybody, international even. So he's given out over sixty three referrals in just nine months. Most of them have come in the last few months. So he's done something really cool that you guys can take some ideas from. And we're going to talk specifics, how to start a podcast, what microphone you should use, what kind of hosting platform you should use. And just so you know, you can, if you don't want to listen through to get that info, all you you can just find out what I'm using and get a $20 uh, Amazon gift card if you use Buzzsprout for your host. That's the host I use for all of my podcasts and my flash briefing. You can just go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash resources and take advantage of that. But such a great show because he talks about some of the misconceptions he had when he first launched his podcast. Uh, he didn't know how to do it, just like just like me, just like anyone who started a podcast. We didn't – we weren't exactly born – knowing how to do a podcast. We had to learn. We had to actively seek out the information. The information's out there for free all over the place in droves. You just have to actually Google it or YouTube how to start a podcast and learn how to do it. It's really not that hard. So he has some great pointers 
on what you as a, as a local real estate agent can do to grow your business. There's, you know, there's referrals and then there's just becoming a local celebrity. You could even do both. Um, so you're really going to enjoy the interview today from David Sedoni, the how to buy a homes guy, sorry, how to buy a home guy. Before we jump into the show, I need to thank our sponsor this week, Easy Agent Pro. These guys are one of my absolute favorite vendors in our industry. I've been, I've had an Easy Agent Pro website for over three years now. That's where uh, Search Salt Lake is. I've had my website with them. If it was not for Easy Agent Pro over three years ago, I don't know where the hell I'd be in my career. It was their platform and the ease of use and how effective it was at capturing leads and growing your your local SEO so you could be found through the search engines. Uh, without that and without the affordability, I don't know. I I probably wouldn't have even been able to do content marketing. I, if you've heard my story before, I you know I might not have even been in the industry. I might have had to quit because I wouldn't have been able to make it. So I really believe Easy Agent Pro is the best value in the real estate industry and the mortgage industry. They're now doing these amazing custom websites for mortgage mortgage loan officers and mortgage brokers as well. They are doing a special deal. If you guys need a website, first off, you need your own damn website, not just a profile page on your brokerage's website. Because what if you leave your brokerage? What are you going to send? Or even if you stay with your brokerage, what are you just going to send all your clients to you know, yourbrokerage.com and just let, you know, there's so many things you need your own website for. So if you're in that boat, they are doing an incredible promo this month for the month of November until the end of November 2019. They're, this is for uh, Massive Agent Podcast listeners. To get this deal you, at checkout, you just need to put in the promo code Dustin. You could also use MassiveAgentPodcast.com slash EAP. And here's what you're getting. They're waiving the setup fee. Okay, so that's like 200 bucks. They're waiving that. Uh, you get a, a $100 Visa gift card your third month. After you've, after you've had a site for, for over two months, the third month, they send you a $100 Visa gift card. That's pretty cool. The free pro designer package, which, which lets you design and customize a few more things and, and their designers do a few more things on your behalf at the setup. It takes a lot of that, that initial, what do I do work? off your plate. So they're throwing that in for free. And the CRM that they now built, they have a CRM built into this whole platform for free for 12 months. You cannot get this deal anywhere else except for putting the promo code Dustin in at checkout. You can get some of that stuff, but to get all of it together, you must use promo code Dustin or massiveagentpodcast.com slash EAP. Thank you, Easy Agent Pro for being an amazing partner and continuously and continually adding value to agents and mortgage peeps. So let's jump into the episode now with David Sedoni, host of How to Buy a Home, or rather the How to Buy a Home podcast, and learn some of his secrets and tips. And if you've ever been wanting to do a podcast, you need to hear this. Listen through to the end. There's gold nuggets all the way to the end. Let's let's do it. What's up, guys? I'm here with the How to Buy a Home guy, David Sedoni from Orange County. He started a podcast called How to Buy a Home, and he's absolutely killing it right now. Um, it's and it's a direct to consumer podcast. It's super exciting to hear uh, how he's done it and and kind of what his plans are, what some of the next steps are. So, uh, I mean, this show is all about why you need to start a podcast, and this is one specific way you could do it. David Sedoni, welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast. What is up? Thank you very much. Very excited and honored to be here, my friend. You bet, man. You bet. Yeah. So when did you when did you start the show? So uh, earlier this year, 2019, uh, January, February, after 13 years of real estate, I started to hit a little burnout. And my wife said, I don't like this jackass in my house. Get out <laughs> dude. So because I live here next to Disneyland and I've got over 13 years, 73 different transactions with the people at the happiest place on earth. Nice. Uh, you know, and a lot of those ended up being first time buyers. So I do about seven or eight a year. My totals 85 first time buyers in my career. And she goes, why don't you go to first time buyers? And I said, because everyone says you shouldn't do that because it's the low man on the totem pole. And she goes, yeah, but you're happy dummy. So I went, all right. And I started, uh, my title guys actually are with um, Fidelity. And so Chelsea Pites had been giving them a lot of information and they turned me on to 
uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, onto her podcast, onto your podcast. And I went, I want to do a podcast. And the goal was all my Disney folks who were kind of, you know, hanging out, renting for 2,500 bucks a month, you know, mm-hmm. 10 miles away from Disneyland, that I get them to listen to the podcast because they have a lot of downtime because they're, the, they're all the techs on the shows. Um, the guys who do the lights and sound because they're Teamsters. So they look just bitching on paper for lenders. Nice. And so I was like, well, they're, they'll sit there. They're, you know, awesome nerds. And they'll listen to podcasts, you know, while they're waiting 45 minutes for the next show. And the goal was to help educate them in a passive way. Um, turns out podcasts go all over the world. And now it's turned into a referral machine for me. That is incredible. So did you used to work for Disney? What's the, what's the Disney angle? Three different times, high school, college, and afterwards. Okay. So in high school, uh, I was in the inter- entertainment department there. Um, and that was a super fun job, just you know, goofing around, dancing around with Mickey Mouse all summer. Um, and then in college, I worked at their exclusive place called Club 33, which is the you know, fancy members-only club. Used to be the only place you could get booze in Disneyland. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. I've only been there once. I was like twelve or fourteen or something. I just remember Mammoth Mountain. It was closed, or no, Matterhorn. Yep, something like that. It was closed. I was bummed. I know that's the weirdest thing. Anytime it rides down, you're like, "Huh? Someone saved for three and a half years for this day, and they can't go on Indiana, yeah. or whatever Space Mountain. They've been waiting three and a half years." So, yeah, yeah but, it's all good. Yep, yeah. and then. Um, I started a little, I had a little career in showbiz and, um, towards the end of my career in my twenties, I was hosting game shows. That was my job. I like, I hosted the kids version of wheel of fortune. And then I hosted a show on the Disney channel. And, um, then I met a gal and was like, I don't think I'm going to be Ryan Seacrest. So I'm going to get another career. So I moved down back down to orange County. And at the same time I moved down here, they opened uh, the who wants to be a millionaire attraction at the, the other park at Disneyland when they opened their new park, Disney's California adventure. And they needed a host at the time. It was a, a Regis for those of you who are old enough to remember that. I so, am indeed. I yeah. love that show. That show was so cool back in the day. Oh dude, it was great. It was awesome. I was supposed to go to New York on September 12th, 2001 and go shoot a show. Jeez. Uh, Got canceled, obviously. We did go a month later, and we worked with Regis. But um, so that my friends knew I had experience in game show stuff, and they're like, "Hey, we need just you know people to put on the sub list for call-ins." So I went and did it, and that's where I met all these techs in the awesome. down. Just became friends with them while I was investing in real estate, and then I you know transitioned over to residential, and I knew all these guys, and I knew what they were renting for. And back then, when rates were at 6%, it still made sense for them to stop renting for 2500 bucks a month in the city next to Disneyland. Right, right. I, 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 okay, so the, the journey there is crazy. But I, I've been watching you from, from the outside looking in. I mean, you're, you're one of the Massive Agent Society members. And so I've, I've been watching you uh, when you launched your show and, and then just hearing, it, like you, you've updated me here and there about like, hmm, just got another referral. Like, it's just gone bonkers. And if you search Apple Podcasts or wherever for how to buy a home podcast, your show shows up. So tell, was that the plan? When you launched the show, obviously it's how to buy a home. So that doesn't really appeal to realtors. It appeals to consumers. But what, what has happened? Let's talk about what's happened to you business-wise since you launched the show. And, and then... Uh, even diving a little deeper, what, what did you not expect? Like what has happened that you were not expecting? You know, it's interesting because when I did my research for it, I saw a gigantic vacuum. Um, I saw some people, very, very few people out there were talking directly to this consumer through this medium. And as you know, young and old, um, they podcasts are a part of our lives now and you know no longer do you say a podcast and people go huh and especially the buyers in this demographic Mm -hmm. it's one of the places where they do their research first of all they double the research that 
we do when we do anything. And right. second, they'll research through audio. So I, I went and I looked on, you know, both the searches for podcasts, but then I also went to Google just to see, okay, what else is out there? And I Googled first time buyer, first time home buyer. And I Googled, I got 19 pages before I gave up because there was no realtors, none. It was lenders and uh, a, a few, um, you know, first time buyer grant and city and county stuff, but it was all lenders. And so that's when I decided, all right, I think maybe if I put this out there, it'll be an educational tool and perhaps it'll get a little further out there and I'll be able to help educate people, not necessarily in my area. Right. Uh, in the back of my head, I was always thinking, boy, wouldn't it be bitching to be the, the Dave Ramsey of, you know, uh, a first time buyer niche. Yeah. Well, it turns out that, um, it exponentially grew a lot faster than I thought. Um, you know, originally I thought, okay, my friends will listen to this who I've been trying to get to call me and, you know, use the realtors that I've developed over 13 years of relationships through my coaching programs and everything else that I've been doing to help them if they're in Virginia or Hawaii or Atlanta. Um, but now it turns out that uh, it has exploded so much that uh, let's see, we started in March and I had a couple of referrals here and there. And now I've got to the point where um, we've got six closed, uh, one more in escrow and one with offers out and 54 more people in the planning phases that I have referred out to other agents. And then I'm since March. Out. Yeah, it's so th you had 63 referrals given out since March. Correct. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I know the title of the show now. I was going to, I was going to call it like why realtors need to start a podcast, but uh, 63 referrals in <laughs> nine months. Yeah. 63 referrals in nine months. That's the title. There you go. Jeez. That's incredible. So, um, so obviously that's worked faster and better than you originally thought it would, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Uh, what, uh, let's go flip side. Like what, what did you kind of expect to happen that hasn't or what's happened that's different than the way you thought it was going to play out? Cause this was your first podcast, right? Yeah, absolutely. I've been okay. a podcast consumer and junkie for a long time, but yeah. I always felt that unless you're, you know, in listening to people like you and um, you know, other very smart marketers out there, Facebook and video is the way to go to become the mayor of your city, you know, on the listing side, if you want to become that trusted resource, you know, or a solid, um, high SEO website, um, you know, to do like you've done in Salt Lake or like other people have done in, in multiple cities all over the country. Yeah. But when it comes to the buyers, uh, it's, it, everything kind of falls under webinar or live seminar um, there are a couple of people out there that are selling their, you know, we'll tell you everything you need to know for 250 bucks. So right. I decided I'm going to go, you know, Gary V give it away. And which is kind of the way I do my business anyway. Some of my Disney people I meet with once and we don't close for three years, but I know they sit around the break room and talk about me. So I'm cool with that. And so I thought, all right, if I do a podcast, not only is it going to be educational and helping people, but it's also going to be qualifying people for me. You know, 26,000, 27,000 downloads right now. I don't have 27,000 leads that have come in. Right. Uh, you know, I've only got 29 episodes up, but anybody who took the time to listen and then, first of all, they searched it. They, they, they sought it out as opposed right. to, oh, here's an ad. Let me click on it. If you find my podcast, it's because you went into your Spotify, your Apple pods, and you went, how do you buy a home? And then you listened and then you heard my call to action, you know, five, six, seven times telling them, Hey, you know, and it starts with transparency. I was straight up and said, this is what I think is wrong with the real estate industry. This is what I think is broken. First time buyers are getting screwed. My motto is realtors think you suck. They think yeah. you spend their, their time, their money, and their energy. So the best agents, their, their whole goal 
is never to work with you again. So how do we find the agents who are good that want to work with you? So I got that message out there first, kind of a, you know, biggest dirty little secret in real estate. And then I started giving them the, the how to's. And then eventually I get to the point where I go, but the real thing is stop trying to be a surgeon, hire the best surgeon. Yes. I love it. So you set the expectation already that once they learn and educate themselves, you can, you can find them a qualified professional that, that will treat them right, that will uh, educate them the, the same way you have through your show. Yeah. And, the, and then the, the final piece of the puzzle is it, the, the value to them. If you're renting right now for $2,000 a month, that's $24,000 a year. If you do that for two years, that's $48,000. Every single one of my 85 first time buyers has told me, damn, David, I should have done this earlier. That's what they all said because they could have, because they didn't realize the tax benefits of home ownership. They didn't realize the 50% up to $50,000 on their 401k, which they're using to diversify their financial, uh, you know, strength and, and, and their foundation for their future. Mm-hmm. And they know their home is going to be another big part of that portfolio, but they have no idea they can do that. I had a gal in New Orleans she and her husband, they're 34 and 39 years old, and she's an artist. And um, she was painting a mural at the zoo, and she was listening to my podcast. And when she heard the 401k stuff, she like dropped her brush, freaked out, sat there with all the animals chirping in her at like five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and just sat there and listened to the podcast. Two months later, she closed on a house. Oh, that's so awesome. You're, I want to I wanna jump back to what you said about how uh, those, the podcast itself, the topic qualifies people listening. It's not a radio show. You mentioned Dave Ramsey. It, it's not a radio show where if somebody's just listening to a station, all of a sudden they start hearing your show. The only way they will hear your podcast is if they actively look for it and click on it. That's it. So they've all, every single one of your, of your subscribers and listeners has done that, that to a certain extent. Um, And they clicked and listened. So you know right off the bat they are interested in buying a home, whether that's today or 10 years from now. And to open the show, and I want want to mention this too because there's this misconception that I'm so sick of that first-time home buyers, they're, you know, um, you you want to focus on, uh, you don't want to focus on first-time buyers because they're the lowest price point, right? Well, that is extremely short-term thinking. Because first-time home buyers, if you take care of them, they will close many different deals with you and refer you many different deals. There's no better client than a first-time home buyer. That's why with Facebook ads, I always recommend stop worrying about running seller seller ads, run buyer ads for first-timers if you can be patient. And if not, run buyer ads um, of people who already own homes. So they have to sell also. So you get sellers and buyers. Uh, it, your, your podcast is qualifying people. And, and we were talking off air about what this could eventually lead to. Here's, here's why you need a podcast, guys. There's so many different things you can do. David, you decided to go direct to consumer with this. I go direct to the industry. I, I go to other agents, right? Well, there's always an advertiser or a potential sponsor that might want to get in front of whoever your audience is. For you, it's like Ashley Furniture or Target or Pier 1 Imports or, you know, a moving arrow moving company or whatever the hell they all want to get in front of your clients An insurance company. There's so many things you can do and you just start the process knowing what could happen, but you can't see the top of the staircase. You start taking the first steps without knowing what step five, six, seven, eight, nine are. And look what's happened already since March. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, you know, it, 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 puts two pieces together where, you know, the first piece is if you, if you start from um, the customer service place, you know, where you're not thinking about me, I'm going to be the biggest, best agent. You're thinking about how do I be the best agent for my client? If you think about that first, and that started for me where it was education first, um, you know, the core principles from uh, your boy Rand um, and understanding that, you know, being the best agent is the way to attract. um, Yep. And then understanding after that, that, you know, I'm developing this being transparent and telling you, these are the things that I would like to help you with realizing that there's a, there's a giant void in whatever it is. And you won't be able to see the top of the staircase. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't. 
Yeah. My thought was, oh, you know, these people need some help. And, you know, how many first time buyers are in my area? So I'll do a podcast and maybe their friends will tell their friends. Well, then I found out there are a ton of people seeking it out. You know, one of the first referrals I had was a 24 year old guy. Uh, he was one of seven kids. His parents still rented. No one in his family had ever bought a house and he got a job in Atlanta. He signed a lease and then two years in was like, I dig this job. I dig this place. Okay. I'm 10 months out. He went and talked to three different realtors. All of them told him to come back later when he was closer. So then he was on a sales call driving to Kentucky and he found me on Spotify because he had that desire and that pre-qualification came so huge for me. And I never even thought about that when I was doing the podcast. My thought was, this is an educational tool that I have to tell people about. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize how sought after it would be. Well, you picked such a great title, How to Buy a Home. Like that, yeah. That's an SEO-friendly title that doesn't just work on podcast platforms. It works on Google, on YouTube, everywhere. Like That's a term that people are actively searching for. It's it's amazing, and I cannot believe you freaking found this this uh, white space, this this vacuum of of that in podcasting. It's incredible. So I I applaud you, and I'm so excited to see what happens in the next six months, nine months, a year. Um, it's just going to get nuts. Um, let, let's talk about doing a podcast specifically uh, to, to bring value to those who who don't have a podcast, but they want to. And, and like I've said before, David, you chose to speak directly to consumers nationally or internationally. Um, you could do a local podcast that goes direct to consumer that's just about your community. Another fantastic idea that agents should do. Um, what, when you first started your podcast, what was the most confusing thing about it or what was holding you back until you decided, screw it, I'm going to do it. What was holding you back the most from launching the show? Well, I'm going to be totally boring. Uh, and, you know, guess what the number one answer is when it comes to podcasts? Equipment. Mm -hmm. Everyone always says that crap. Fortunately for me, um, my title guys are hooked in with uh, Chelsea. Chelsea Pites? Yep. Yeah. And she's the best. She's the best. So um, I had a little bit of help at the beginning. Um, but I would say probably what, what held me back was, you know, just the standard, how the hell do I do this? And even in the last nine months, I guarantee you there's 10 times more information than when I started, you know, right now, if you're listening to the podcast, you know, freaking ask Dustin and me where to go. Um, because we're here and, yep. it. and that's what I did. I just did a bunch of research. I Googled it. Um, Chelsea had talked to my guys who had started their own podcast. So then I, you know, I listened to her podcast, how to start a podcast, which was super meta. Yep. And, and then I got the, then I got the equipment and then I started with anchor. Then I found a company that, um, you know, everyone's got their own uh, little podcast producers and things like that. I found a company that um, was local and, they actually uh, take the recording, they transcribe the whole thing, they put it on my website so that every podcast has a full transcription, they do a blog, and they work on the SEO. Nice. So there's a little bit of back end that I think is important. But, Absolutely. But straight up, do it. You can just go to Anchor and you, know, you buy the $100 Yeti, go to you know, record it, figure out how to save that on your thing, put it up on Apple and bang, you're up and you're going. Absolutely. Yeah. Anchor's, Anchor's easy to use. I use Buzzsprout for my host. And if you don't know, the host is where you upload your audio file to. You upload the episode to your host. The host platform then distributes it to all the different podcast players. Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pocket, all of those. Wherever you listen to podcasts, it's syndicated to it from the host. And uh, yeah, a lot of people use Anchor. I think Buzzsprout is, well, if I can use it, if I can figure out Buzzsprout, it must be pretty easy. <laughs> um, so it, it's just funny to me because I get this all the time too. People, people say, hey, I want a podcast, but I don't know how. It's, I'm going to step on some toes. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's not 
a valid excuse for an adult in 2019 to say, I don't know how to do something. It's not a, there's, it's certainly not a lack of information or instructions on how it's a lack of willingness to seek out that information. Fricking Google it, YouTube it. It's, it's not podcasting is very easy compared to doing video because you're only dealing with audio. There's, there's no video to edit. You don't need a video camera. Like the lighting doesn't matter. It's just audio. It's so easy. You just have to actually, if you really want to do it, figure out how. Google it, YouTube it. So that's how you started. Like, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to figure it out. Just like any other thing in life that we, we don't, we're not born knowing how to do a podcast. You have to learn how to do it. And then it gets easier every single time. Um, I like that you outsource the production of it to somebody just to preserve your bandwidth. You know, you, you, you can absolutely do it yourself. And I did for well over a year. I did it all myself. And then I, I found someone for 50 bucks an episode that I record the show. I upload it to Google Drive. They take it. They, they put my intro music on. They, you know, fix a couple things audio wise and then upload it to Buzzsprout for me. Then all I do afterwards is go in and, and write my own title, write my own description, all that stuff. And now I have someone doing my WordPress blog for me. Um, what do you pay per episode for that service that, that you described? Um, or is it per month? Uh, I have to go back and look at my number because I buy them in chunks. I do 25 at a time. It's similar, oh, okay. it's similar to 50 to 75, but um, I upgraded nice. to the premium package. Yeah, and it's awesome what they do. They do all that for 50 to 75 an episode? Yeah, I think it's, maybe it's, maybe it's closer to a hundred. I think that okay. maybe the package is two thousand or twenty five hundred for twenty five. But see, I upgraded to um, have them uh, manage a lot of my stuff on my WordPress as well. Mm, yeah, but nice. uh, at at the at the most, I think it's about a hundred bucks an episode, and it's the transcription, and they've got graphics and pictures and all that stuff. But yeah, at at the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. I listened. To, I mean, I seriously listen to other podcasts on how to do a podcast. And then I think that's it was all I did. My yeah. IT guy taught me the greatest thing ever, which was, you know, I didn't know what I was doing with my computer. And he said, what's your question? And he typed my question into the computer. And then we watched a video of some 12 year old girl, you know, somewhere else in the country, walk <laughs> how to fix my computer. And it was at that point I went, Oh, there's no question. I don't have an answer to, and probably have a video to walk me through it. I have no more excuses. None. Exactly. It, it's simply, are you going to, are you going to seek out the information? Yeah, That's it. You're going to binge more stuff on Netflix. Right. It, it's, it's mind boggling. Podcasting is not a huge, um, it, it's such a low barrier to entry. Look, if you want to edit your show yourself. Um, so what I do, or when I was editing it myself, I use a program called ScreenFlow. It's a video editing uh, program for Mac. And, and I was using it for videos, like on my Instagram profile, all those square videos with like the, the white bars on the top and bottom and the scrolling progress bar. I'm, I built that in ScreenFlow and I use ScreenFlow because it's, it's simple. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I'm, I don't need all the bells and whistles to edit a motion picture or a special for National Geographic. I just need a freaking 60 second Instagram video. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I can just upload an audio file here. It doesn't have the video. Cool. This is easy. And so I started editing in ScreenFlow. It's, it's super simple. You can use Audacity on PC. You can use GarageBand on Mac for free. And, uh, you know, you just have to learn how to do it. Um, it's just, are you going to figure out how to do it or not? It's so simple. So I, I have my mic. I record into my laptop and take the audio file, send it over to my editor. That's it. it and then write the description and, and title in Buzzsprout and schedule it. It's really that simple. It doesn't take a huge time commitment to do. How much time per week would you say you spend doing your show, David? Um, I, the nice thing about doing the podcast is I can do it on my own time. And, um, you know, I've got kids that are nine and 13. So um, I probably do maybe an hour a night during that Netflix time. You know, when I would be just after the kids are in bed, when I'd be chilling with my wife. Um, and that's mostly writing because I'm super anal. If you just go off the top of your head, if you just, you know, have things that you can talk about. I mean, I've got years of experience that I'm able to talk about it, but I just like to craft a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the night I do the podcast, it might take me three or four hours just to get it all together, get it ready to go, do the recording, you know, but now it's gotten a lot smoother. Cause like you, I did at the beginning, man, I used to put it into anchor and I used to edit my own, uh, you know, music drop in and all that stuff. And, and then like anything else in real estate, I realized that I need to leverage it and a hundred bucks an episode. And I got a hundred times more value and it was one tenth of the time. Yes. Yes, exactly. Wow. Um, because here's the thing that people need to understand when you do a show, just like any piece of content, this could, you could be a YouTuber, you could be a blogger, you could just do Instagram stories, whatever. Doing the content is just the first step. You have to do it and do it well, obviously. But then people need to know about it. People need to know that your podcast, your blog, your video exists. So you've got to get good at, at promotion of it. So David, what you've done is you're having somebody create all this collateral and all these like, you know, the, the transcription and the blog post and everything so that it can be found through the search engines and you're making it easier to be found. Then you go out and you promote it. You share it on social media and you do all, all the stuff we talk about on this show all damn day. You just do for your show. And, and so it's a two-part thing. So if you're going to start a podcast, just go into it knowing you've got to do the show and, and do it great, but then, but then promote it. People need to know it exists. It's a two-part thing. Create great content, let people know it exists. That's it. And people, a lot of times I hear them get bogged down and think, geez, another thing I have to promote and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You're thinking about it backwards. You're already here, you know, in the massive agent society. If you're already here and you're listening to this podcast, we're assuming you're listening to others. So I'm assuming you already have platforms where you are promoting your social media. You've already got it. It's not right. uh, one more thing I have to figure out. It's one more tool I get to plug in into an assembly line that's already running. Right. Yeah. It's funny too because I had somebody ask me there. Um, when was it? I, it was at one of the one of the last talks I did. I think it was here in Salt Lake. They were like, well, when do you prospect? Like, you know, do you, when you're doing all this stuff, like when do you have time to prospect? I'm like, I am prospecting. This is me prospecting. Like social media is how I prospect. My podcast is how I prospect. It's just a different way to do it. You don't have to make phone calls to prospect. You, sir, David, are killing it with your 63 freaking referrals uh, since March. That's, uh, I'd say that's a little bit more effective than traditional prospecting wouldn't you yeah my, my answer mm -hmm. to my prospect is because i'm on the west coast um when i'm sleeping when yep. my, i'm having breakfast with my family and then i go to my computer and i have three new leads from baltimore and florida and new orleans because they listen to the podcast it, it's it really just takes switching what you think prospecting is this traditional, I'm going to time block two hours every morning and call people and interrupt their days and ask them for something, which is the wrong way to do it anyways. But let's say you do that. Well, why not instead do something more effective like you've done, like, you know, social media, all that stuff. Um, let's see, what other aspects of starting a podcast can we cover here? Uh, okay, so, so when you started your show, aside from how to do it, what was the biggest misconception you had or, or what was something that you totally didn't even think of that's important, but you didn't know going into launching the show? I mean, there's lots of stupid little things, uh, royalty free music. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to, to, uh, uh, have a way to jazz it up. Um, I think probably one of the bigger th things I didn't think about was, or realize was that most growth in podcasts, um, happens through interviews. And sure. I think the same way that uh, people do, I call it the mayor campaign. Um, I know you guys call it something different, um, you know, becoming the mayor of your town, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you are that local expert, um, you know, that comes through, you go and you interview the dry cleaner, the, the mom and pop restaurants, all that stuff. You can do the same thing with podcasting and then you get listeners of, of those people. That's yep. probably one of the biggest thing I realized that, podcast grow through other podcasts. It's all very ancestral. It is. And it's a like, this is why, uh, this is why you'll have um, like popular shows like Larry King, for example, back in the day, Larry King with his awesome suspenders and his sharp shoulder blades. 
Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Heck yeah, yeah. steak knives. Maybe. Yeah, he'd always have guests on. Why? I mean, he sure he he's a smart guy. He could just talk. He could just have every show just be him talking. But no, it, if you're a fan of The Rock and The Rock is on the Larry King show, you're going to listen to it. So now Larry King is now on that fan's radar. It, the, it's so tried and true and it works with podcasts. Um, ever since I started doing interviews, which was a long time ago, but at first it was just me bloviating on some topic uh, back, you know, the first 10 episodes or so. When I started doing interviews, it really started growing because then the guest, they now wanted to promote that because it helped promote them and their credibility. Now they, they have a feather in their cap. Hey, I was on this show. Hey, I was a guest on this show. Here's a link. Go listen. And now you're right. You're growing. Um, you're expanding to their audience as well. At a local level, if, I think for everyone listening, the low-hanging fruit here, if you're going to start a podcast, is do one about your local community, not about real estate. For the love of God, don't do it about your market updates or anything like that at a, at a local level. Do it about what's going on in the community, what's of interest, what's sexy, what businesses are going in or, or coming out, all that stuff. And interview uh, the, the food truck owner of the, that super popular food truck or the, the head of the art show, whoever's doing the art show downtown or the, the Greek festival. Like, Go interview those people and then they're going to share it with their audiences. It's, it's just so easy. It just, you just have to do it. Yeah, and there's tons of people out there that are excited and ready to talk. I mean, geez, you find your local craft beer place, those guys won't shut up. It's amazing. <laughs> there's no shortage of people ready and willing to talk. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I think we could include ourselves in that, David. Uh, 100%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm just trying to think of like what people need to know. Oh, I get asked a lot about, well, do you need music? Like the format of the show, Okay. Do an interview show, absolutely. But then the what matters, so on this podcast, I have that that intro uh, with someone else's voice, the voiceover and, and all those clips from YouTube videos, like, you know, it takes brass balls to sell real estate, like that kind of stuff. You can do that. And I, I just had somebody on Fiverr do it. Just go to Fiverr, search podcast intro. Oh, it wasn't Fiverr? It wasn't five bucks. It was like 80 bucks. Um, but I said, here, put these clips in, do this. They sent me an audio file and I use it every time. Dude, um, I have been so jealous of your intro forever. And I'm so <laughs> pissed at myself right now because you know, it was one of my big hangups logo. Ah, uh, yes. Podcast logo. And you know what I did? Oh, dummy, figure it out. Listen to the smart people. Smart people say Fiverr. I went to Fiverr. I tried one. I didn't like it. I did another one. I love it. And it's great. And then every time I listen to your podcast, I'm like, geez, he's so sweet. He's got to know some audio. Duh, you went to Fiverr too for your Fiverr. audio. Yep, absolutely. Yours and, is the best. Why, thank you. It, it cracks me up every time. Uh, what? Here's what's important. And, and my Industry Connected podcast does not have an intro like that. It's just music that opens the show. So the only thing that matters is consistency. The show needs to begin and end the same way every single time. It's a psychological thing for the, for the listener. It's, it's much more of a professionally done um, show. Like if you just like jump into it, you're like, Hey, I'm David. And I, you know, I'm, here's how to buy a house. And it's, and it's not consistent every time. It seems more like a hobby. So having a consistent intro and outro is, is key what that looks like is up to you. You don't need to go spend 80 to 100 bucks to have a professional intro done. You can, if, if, you, if that would excite you, cool. But you could just do video like I've done, on, or sorry, audio, some music to start uh, my Industry Connected show. It's just music for like five seconds or something. And then it fades out and I start the show. It just needs to be the same every time. So now this, well, I don't know what to do about an intro. Okay, I just knocked that out of the park for you too. So you don't need to worry about that. I'm just removing what, what we're doing here, David, is we're removing excuses. Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting because as you're talking, my brain is exploding with other things too, is, is first of all, I'm so angry at myself that I didn't go to Fiverr because I spent a whole bunch of time searching royalty free music. I found a jam. I like loud. Yeah. But guess what? I can't change my jam. Hmm. Well, you right. know, that, that consistency, if you listen to my podcast from the beginning, um, 
there's there's a bit of consistency, but there's also a few where it's rambling. And sure. so one of the ways that I've been improving is listening to people way smarter than me. And also listening to other podcasts from people way smarter than me. And the one thing, the consistent thing that I see is surprise, surprise, consistency. Yeah. And giving the consumer what they want, whatever you choose, the idea of just starting to talk and maybe going through, you know, you have to use the old tried and true stuff where you tease, you give an open loop question, you know, find a question that someone hears right at the beginning that they're going to be interested in. Maybe even, you know, I do it before my music and now that's my consistent theme at the top. I'll ask a question. And if they've clicked on it, it's probably related to whatever the title is already. Yep. So that tease it a little bit more. So now they're there. And by creating that consistency, that format that says you're here, you know, you put me in your ear pods and you want to answer this question. Well, let's go into that question. And if you keep that consistent format, then people will realize, oh, I'm here because I'm getting what I want. Yes, exactly. Like look at every popular show out there. They all have they all have very consistent formats. And don't get hung up on what that looks like. Like do do whatever the hell you feel like. Look, and I've told this story before, and I and I've told it when I've when I've done talks at conferences about starting a podcast. I was walking my dog on January 1st, 2018, listening to Pat Flynn on the Smart Passive Income podcast. And he was talking about podcasting and something he said made it seem so stupid to me that I would continue dragging my feet on, on launching a show. Cause I'd always wanted to, I'm a marketer and I, I love doing marketing things. And, but I just, it was on the list. It was just down the list and something he said or, or how he said it made me realize I need, I need to go home and record my first episode tonight. So I'm like, okay, made the decision. I'm going to go home and do an episode. Awesome. And the first episode, we'll just explain what the podcast is. And then second episode uh, was about Facebook ads. And then I'm like, okay, I need a name. And for some reason, the term mega agent came to mind. And I'm like, what's bigger than mega agent? Oh, massive agent. And I thought about it for about 1.4 seconds. That was it. I just decided, screw it. Massive agent's the name. I'm not going to overthink it. Um, if, if you're doing a local community podcast, have your, the name of your community somewhere in it, of course. But um, don't overthink it because massive agent meant nothing until I made it mean something to some people. And same with your show. Like it's the same with everything. You've just got to pick a name and freaking do it. It's, it's not a valid excuse to let it delay you months because people like David are starting shows and killing it. And, you know, you're sitting on your hands. It's unfortunate, yeah. but it's the way of the world. Yep. And a little bit of research is all it takes. Mm -hmm. And everyone gets intimidated on that. Like, I mean, you in your 1.4 seconds got lucky, um, you know, but when you're talking about your community, if you're doing Salt Lake or if you're doing Orange County, there's going to be a ton of websites that say Orange County something or other. Mm -hmm. But if you take a little bit of Googling, you know, you're going to find the hole. You're going to find the white space. You're going to find the vacuum. And then bang, you know, you check the SEO on that, make sure that that's going to get you people listening. And then your excuse is done. Now you got your name. Your logo and your music, done. Fiverr, we're done with that. The microphone, easy. The $100 Yeti or whatever. Or just start with your pods and press record and go. And if you don't know how to do it, you can do it on Zoom, GarageBand, everything else that Dustin talked about. And just get started. And don't freak out about what am I going to say. Mine are all too damn long. I ramble. They can, 15-minute chunks. You probably have 10 podcasts in the top of your brain right now. If you yeah. only have 15 minutes at a time. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. That's another big question. Well, what do I do it about? If you're doing a local show, there's no shortage. Look at what your local newspaper or local news station covers outside of news and politics. What are they covering about the community? The, the high school football rivalry, um, you know, the, the women's volleyball playoffs, um, you know, some kid just won like a, I don't know, some service award, whatever, you know, anything, restaurants, attractions, uh, nightlife, uh, even the blog post type stuff, like the 10 best coffee shops in town and interview some coffee shop owners, like all oh, that if, stuff. If you're looking for drama, just 
join next door or the local <laughs> community Facebook pages and you'll get your, you know, your controversial episode. If you want to do one every fifth episode, cause there's no shortage in those drama lands. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I want to, so we're going to put all, we talked about a lot of different tools or resources you can use. We're going to put those in the show notes at massiveagentpodcast.com slash episodes. You can find this episode up on the website. We'll put links to everything. Um, the, the podcast editor that I use, it's, uh, it's called pro podcasting services, pro podcasting services.com. Um, there's a guy named Joel. Just tell him that you listen to my show. Just mentioned Dustin Brome. And uh, I think they, they do a deal but yeah, I pay like 50 bucks an episode. Um, do you know what yours is called? I want to look into yours, actually. Potatize. Potatize? E-T-I-Z-E. Potatize. <laughs> Potatize. See, it's a stupid name, but they made it mean something. It's awesome. It's great. And it, it's, it's uh, you know, it turns out I was working with a videographer and he knew these folks and they do a podcast about podcasting. And, you know, it's a couple and, and he's on the tech side and she is a Ted talk person who does, you know, all kinds of uh, other speaking engagements and from the marketing side. So, you know, between the two of them and then they've got the, the backside, they're fantastic. I love them. End of commercial. Awesome. 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 Cool. Uh, any, anything we didn't cover that you think would be important for any, any aspiring podcast hosts out there? I, I think probably the most important thing is uh, we kind of touched on it towards the end there. Um, just like your own marketing, you know, we all look at our own marketing and we find ways to tweak it. Um, but I think the biggest thing that uh, salespeople, not just real estate people, but salespeople, the time that they waste in their car listening to music, as opposed to listening to other podcasts or listening to other education, I think that, first of all, understand, step one is understand what Dustin and I are saying, that it's way easier than you think. And then once you get it up, just like your campaigns, don't just let it run and not check in on it, not listen to other marketing people, not continue to understand how this marketing medium is evolving. Because I found so many different things because I'm always listening to other people talk about the podcast medium while yes. I'm on my podcast, mostly because it's hit me over the head that this crap is important to me in my, my future now. Right. So, yeah, there's no need I'll, to recreate the wheel. Like, just listen to, see what other people are doing. Get ideas from that. That's all I do. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. If, you, if you dig deep, there are people talking to you about how to improve your podcast, which mm -hmm. is great. But, you know, that's why, you know, I've, I had Facebook marketing before I came to the Massive Agent Society, but I joined because I knew I could do it better. Right. Yeah. I appreciate that plug, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. your, your check is in the mail, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> oh, it's already come thanks to the marketing. Love it. Love it. Cool, man. Uh, I, I just want to urge people to do it. This medium is still so small. All right. It, it might feel like podcasting is huge and that everyone has one. There's still less than a million podcasts on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Less than a million worldwide. Okay. How many blogs are out there? And would you say that it's still dumb to start a blog? Or, or to what, a website? No. How many YouTube channels are out there? Millions. Is it still dumb to start a YouTube channel? No. Podcasting is such a huge opportunity, especially at a local level. Just make sure that the subject matter is actually desirable by the people you want to reach. If you want to reach consumers locally, stop talking about real estate. Talk about the community itself. Give them a reason to keep coming back over and over and over and over and over and referring it to someone else. Because if you limit it to just people who care about real estate, very few people are in that spot at any given time. It makes it very difficult for someone who, who is consuming your content to share it with their network when they're like, well, maybe I know one or two people that's considering buying, but I don't know. Just make it about the community. Okay. And if you're going to do something like David's done, educating the consumers at a national or international level, cool. Just make sure you know who you're trying to reach and what is interesting to them, what they want to know. Anything to add to that before we jump into the rapid fire? No, I was going to say what's awesome is it is international. I have people from London calling me now. And, uh, you know, my, That's so cool. Is, like you said, make sure I know, you know, what I want to say, but the who I want to reach, 
I didn't realize it was going to go. You know, I got people all over the world listening to my podcast. So now I have to throw it every once in a while. Uh, the laws, it might be different where you're listening to this, but this is kind of a general basic overview. Yeah. Thank you for that disclaimer so that we uh, can stay out of the courtroom. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> all right. Cool, let's man. Let's, uh, let's jump into some rapid fire questions that we do with each guest to help us get to know you a little bit better. Either or, pick one or the other. You don't need to elaborate unless you really, really want to, but we'll bust through them. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram or LinkedIn? Instagram. Ah, book or podcast? Podcast, podcast, podcast. You can listen to books on audio. Audible right. is a book. I put them all in the same category now. If you don't think podcasts are as educational as books, you're listening to crappy podcasts. Yep. And they're always fresh and they're free, unlike they're audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And they're current. You don't have to wait for the second edition to come out. How many authors write on a subject matter like, oh, I don't know, social media, and then have to write a new book a year later? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Alexa or Google Home? Alexa, because it's the first one I bought. Love it. And it's not uh, the creepy, creepy Google. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> iPhone or Android? iPhone all day. Very nice. Keep it away from Google. <clears throat> Burgers or pizza? It's a rough one, but I think pizza. Or both at the same I time. Both, but I'll go pizza because of the variety. I like it. I like it. New York or LA? It's another rough. New, uh, LA to live, New York to visit, hopefully in long chunks. Okay, fair, fair. I've lived in both places, and uh, yeah. But so LA. You're an hour from the mountains and the beach. Can't beat it. Sure. Yeah, it, LA's cool. And so you're in Orange County. I think I think a lot of people who don't live there or, or you know aren't super familiar with the area, they lump Orange County in with LA, that it's all no the way. LA area. Is that accurate? No way. It is it is not LA. It is not the real housewives of Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a um, it doesn't have quite the diversity and, uh, you know, fun city urban walkability in a lot of places, but it is growing. It's just, uh, it's a, you know, cities that have been planned over the years and, you know, some, some places are a little Stepford wives, but in general, you know, it's the beach community. It's the beach boys. It's Huntington beach. I grew up in seal beach and it was awesome. Huntington's fantastic. Newport, like, yeah, yep. I, I'm, a, I'm an Orange County fan. Uh, let's see. B -b -b baseball or football? football? Or do you even like sports? Oh, no. I, I'm the weirdest dude in the world. I'm a gigantic sports fan, and I love musical theater. So deal with that for a little while. Um, <laughs> but I'm a gigantic, and the reason to pause is I'm a gigantic NFL fan, but there's nothing like taking the kids to a baseball game. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, pro or college sports? <laughs> Orange County, dude, pro. We don't give a crap about any college. <laughs> you know, the hardcore SC fans, but yes, I'm jealous of the Midwest. I'm jealous of the SEC. I'm jealous of the Big Ten people. I would love to take my kids to a college football game in one of those places. But, you know, around here, you know, but it sucks too because I'm a Charger fan, and then they moved to LA, and like a couple of weeks ago, Pittsburgh was in town. And it was 75 percent Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's so so crazy. Yeah, it's weird. Mountains or beach? Both, dude. Where I live, either way. Fair, okay. But beach. Are, are we in a real estate bubble nationwide, or is this not a bubble? Oh God, absolutely not a bubble a normal, typical market correction. And if you're a person who thinks that it is a bubble, great, never call me because you're a skeptic who's someone who I, you don't study your history. <laughs> and it's ridiculous. The, you know, there, the last three recession, the last five recessions, three times the housing market has gone up. And the right. one of the times it went down, it was only like 1.6 or 1.9%. And then the other time it went down 19% was 2008 because that bubble was created by the housing market it yes. will absolutely not be created by the housing market now because of the regulations that we've had in the lending and not to mention the fact we're 11 years into a bull mar or, you know into a bull market 
which is the longest bull market we've ever had in history. So a stock market, bear market is coming. And when that, ha- I just did an episode on it, my most recent podcast about this, but the housing market is not going to burst. It may correct with the correction, or it might do like three out of the last five recessions and actually continue on a slow, steady pace. Yes. I love it. I can't argue with that. So did you have something else to add? No, I, cool. you, you, I could do 30 minutes, but I was just going to say study your history. It's just, you obviously can't present it like this to your clients, um, but there is a very nice way to give the data to people. But if people are freaking out about the bubble anyway, especially mm-hmm. my first time buyers, that's what my whole podcast was on. Mathematically, there's no way that waiting for the market to go down 10% makes sense if you're renting for $2,000 a month. Completely so, agree. Completely years, agree. And it's six years, $2,000 a month rent that you put in, plus the tax benefits, plus the appreciation you're going to catch for the two years before it starts to go down. Yes. Completely agree. All right. Uh, podcasting or vlogging? <sighs> well, today, obviously, podcasting. Um, but I feel like sometimes I've kind of heard you say this in the past too. Um, YouTube is massively searchable. So yep. that is another feather I would like to put in my cap sooner or later. But right now the podcast is working and I can do that easier than I can put my YouTube page together. It's up and it's right. there, but yeah. it's not as consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Start with podcasting. Like I'm, I'm not a, I don't have a ton of YouTube stuff going on other than I put my podcast episodes on there uh, with, you know, waveform video. Like it's, it's nothing yeah. special. Um, <clears throat> start with a podcast. And if you can, when you get to the point where you can add on and start doing video, do it then. You don't need to do it all at once and don't let that hold you back for the love of God. Uber or Lyft? Lyft. I don't know why. Whenever it was a few years ago when someone told me Uber was bad, so I just went to Lyft. And- <laughs> but I hard. like Lyft because I get Sky Miles. I get Delta Sky Miles and Hilton Honors Points whenever I ride Lyft. Oh, for at really? least from the airport. Yeah, to and from the airport anyways. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. I mean, it's, wow, it's like an extra benefit of like 45 cents worth of miles or something or, or less. But still, it's a psychological thing. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Gary V, Gary V. Who's that other guy? I know who he is, but Gary V. <laughs> Love it. Okay. And give us an app recommendation. What, what kind of apps are you using right now that you love? Doesn't have to be real estate or business related. What are you using? My podcast app to listen to other podcasts. Which but, one? Do you use Apple Podcasts? Yeah, I use Apple Podcasts. Okay. I speak on that. But, you know, other than that, um, you know, on my phone, I, I guess I'm not using much. I mean, yeah, because they're all kind of marketing related, the stuff that I use. Sure. Um, yeah, but, you know, the, the editing, the live collage and editing apps and things like that. Oh, honey. The discount? Yeah. Thing on your Chrome browser. Yeah. Nice. Love that one. I was yeah. just my apps because you said that. <laughs> and I went, I saw that. That's my favorite thing to tell people because you just put it and it's in the background and you save money. Yes. I've used that on, on Chrome quite yep. a bit. Yep. Uh, so where can, where can I find you? And since this audience is like 98% real estate agent, I'm sure they're going to be like, hmm, how could I be the referral partner for you, David? When you get these, <laughs> these referrals from your, your podcast, how can I be one of those agents? Where can they find you and how can they get on your list? Well, uh, everything's at David Sedoni um, because I, I follow the Gary V model of, of branding myself. Um, so on Instagram, it's at David Sedoni, S-I-D-O-N-I. Uh, if you search how to buy a home podcast or how to buy a home guy is a hashtag you can search everywhere and then you'll get to davidsedoni.com where everything's there. My YouTube page, the podcast, the transcriptions that we talked about with the graphics and everything. You can look at all that as well as a place to contact me. That's the easiest way. Go to davidsedoni.com. It's where all my referrals find me there and uh, just fill out the contact sheet and it goes to my email and things have gotten a little, a little fast, you know, as we sit here in November, um, the screening process and the questionnaire and all that isn't set up, but because podcasts live forever, and I know that someone might be listening to this in six months, hopefully you'll go to davidsedoni.com and find the unicorn realtor page 
where we search for that unicorn realtor who is a magical mythical being that is experienced and also willing to work with the first time buyer. <laughs> my my daughter's t- uh, second birthday party yesterday was um, all dedicated to your unicorn. So, so we got that going for us. My girl's Very not. Nice. And when I came up with the term, I thought it was subconscious. And then I went, oh, no, dumbass. It's straight up conscious. You're unicorns all day, every day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm... I'm in awe of what you've built in such a short period of time with your show. It's, I mean, from what I can see, you are the, like, like you said, you're, you're the how to buy a home guy and you're, you're no different than a Dave Ramsey or a Clark Howard or any other like financial guru that, that people listen to. You're no different. You just do it through podcast and you happen to be a licensed agent and your audience is a highly, highly um, uh, defined and highly, Oh, what's the word? Jeez. Uh, help me out here. They're interested. Very interested. They're hungry. They're hungry. What the hell? Qualified. Jeez. They're, they're, they're yes, highly they're qualified. qualified. But that's, yes. I appreciate that. That's high praise. And, and I think one of the reasons why it works uh, is, is the people that you compared me to, which is also very humbling, is you know Dave Ramsey and Clark Howard both came from a place of giving of educating first Clark didn't need to do what he was doing. And Dave Ramsey did it because he went through what he went through and he didn't want other people to. So, and also I thank you for the inspiration. Um, you and you know, folks, I think I I was listening to you before syndicate was syndicate and, um, love it. OG, OG baby. But I appreciate your inspiration. Um, and, you know, as, cause as you like to be so self-deprecating, I'm like, well, geez, it, you know, he says he's a dumbass and he can do it. Why can't I? Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're doing, you're doing well. So um, guys go, go over and follow David on social media and see what he's doing and how he's doing it. And all the links we've talked about, all the, the services that we've mentioned that, that we're talking about, like for the, for your host or the type of mic, all that stuff. We're going to have links over at massiveagentpodcast.com. If you want to go right to the podcasting resources, you can just type in massiveagentpodcast.com slash podcast gear, or is it podcasting gear? I think it's just podcast gear. Um, or just the resources page, massiveagentpodcast.com slash resources and get links to all that stuff. And there's even some discounts in there for those who use the links. And ultimately, and I know I'm speaking for David, there's so much amazing opportunity that can come from starting a podcast. I, I'm working on some things right now that I never in a million years thought I could have access to or that I'd be able to do. Some, some big things in the works. Same thing for David. If you don't ever start your show, you'll never know how good things can get. You'll never be able to fully realize the power of podcasting if you're just sitting on the sidelines listening to one. So go and do it. It's not hard. It just takes a desire and a little bit of action to seek out how and then just keep doing it. That's it. So David Sedoni, the How to Buy a Home Guy, thank you so much for being on the Massive Agent Podcast, my friend. Thank you. It was an honor. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Guys, if you're... Look, there's two types of people. There's those that are like, "Mm, I have no desire to do a podcast ever. Cool. Then you can just disregard all that. Those of you who say, I'd really like to do a podcast. I'd like to do that. I just don't know where to start. Guys, start on YouTube. Start by Googling how to do it. Start at massiveagentpodcast.com slash resources. So this, this question of what mic do I use? What program? Like all this stuff, it's in there. Okay. And learning how to do it is actually very simple. And, uh, it's just not an excuse anymore that this, I don't know what to do. is just not, not a valid excuse. So please do it. The power in podcasting is incredible. It's changed my life. And, uh, there's just so much cool stuff, so much cool stuff that can come your way if you just get started. So you've heard us for a long time talking about agentology. And if you're running any kind of leads, or sorry, any kind of lead generation, Facebook ads, even if you're you're getting leads from Zillow or homes.com or realtor.com or OpCity or whatever you're doing, you really need to have someone responding to your leads on your behalf. So they can do it instantly and they can provide great support to the lead and they can ask the questions that have been proven to work and and say the things and, and text versus calling and all that stuff. They can do that for you. Well, Agentology has been my go-to partner for that for years. They just changed their name. Agentology is now no no longer 
Agentology is now Verse.io, and the reason being they wanted it to um, – because they do lead response for for uh, businesses in all industries, in all industries, not just for real estate, not just for mortgage, but all industries. And so they felt that the, the name change and the rebrand better served that or at least didn't uh, – at least made it clear that, hey, this is not just for real estate or mortgage. Here's why this is awesome. I love the fact that they're doing more for car dealerships or insurance salesmen or dentists or restaurants or attorneys, whatever. If there's ever a need to get leads, these guys respond to them. I love it because they have more expertise, more data, more insights showing what works with consumers than anyone else on the planet, as far as I know. I mean, outside of Google or Amazon or Apple, these guys know what works. So it's it's so easy because we're in we're in real estate or if you're in mortgage to just think inside the walls of our industry of how lead response and and how how we run ads and all this stuff. Well, guess what? The consumer's the same. Consumers are the same all across the board, right? So learning from what's working in other industries is fantastic. So they might be doing something for an ins- insurance agent or a law firm that they're like, oh my gosh, this is really connecting. Let's try it with our real estate peeps. Let's try it with our mortgage peeps. So they are, they're the best of the best. If you want to convert as many leads as humanly possible, get verse.io. You can go to verse.io. Actually, let me give you my link uh, because they've changed it recently with with the verse thing. So massiveagentpodcast.com slash agentology, which will soon be slash first. So type in massiveagentpodcast.com slash agentology and it will forward to the right place and you can get 50% off your first month of a lead response from the best company on the planet with lead response. 24-7, 365 instant lead response with human beings in San Diego. They're not, it's not Peggy in Siberia answering calls, right? It's uh, it's somebody in San Diego, 24-7, 365 and final word before I wrap it up here, uh, it's nearing the end of the year. People are starting to really uh, reconsider where their their current positions. And I'm, I'm speaking about the brokerage they've chosen or, you know, are they part of a team? Do they not want to be part of the team? Do they want to start a team? Like people are starting to to game plan 2020. I've been getting a lot of of people reaching out asking about EXP over the last week or two. And, uh, and there's some really, really cool stuff with eXp Realty that's coming up. I'm an agent with eXp and I have been for about a year and a half and we're growing like crazy at a local level. There is such a huge opportunity for you to still benefit from the exponential growth of eXp. We're opening up in the United Kingdom. We're opening up in Australia. And then in Q1, we're going to be opening up even more countries. This is amazing for anyone who takes advantage there's, there's so many reasons why, even without that, there's so many reasons why eXp Realty will save you a crap load of money and let you keep a lot more of your hard-earned commissions. And to be an eXp agent, it's only $85 a month. Okay. Even whether that's, if you're not closing any deals, it's just 85 bucks a month. There's no desk fee. There's no royalty fee. There's no, no bull crap. It's 85 bucks a month is all it costs. Plus the other very low uh, transaction-based splits and fees and everything. So if you're at one of these bigger, more traditional brokerages, you know all the big names of the franchise companies, you need to look at eXp because you're going to be able to keep a hell of a lot more of your hard-earned commission and pay a lot less out in fees. And if you want to learn more, just go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash eXp, massiveagentpodcast.com slash eXp, or shoot me a shoot me a message on Instagram at massiveagent. And we'll help you figure out if joining our EXP team is right for you and your business. Spoiler alert, it most likely is. Thank you so much for listening this week. Have a great weekend. Go close some loans. Go sell some homes. And remember, episode 100 next week, make sure you you shoot us a DM on Instagram at Massive Agent with your question. I'll be answering your questions all through the show next week. It's it's a full Q&A episode, and I want you to contribute. So any question that pops up between now and, uh, let's see, I'll be recording on Monday, the, let's see, Monday, November 18th. So make sure you reach out prior to that and we'll get you on the show. This is Dustin Brome with, wow, I almost did my, uh, I almost did my Massive Agent Minute flash briefing um, sign off. Oh, what the hell? This is Dustin Brome with the Massive Agent Podcast.
Na, see ya.